Holy crap. This is the Solidime D7P5810. And it might look familiar. It's like, oh, this <laughs> unremarkable aluminum case looks very familiar. It looks like the old P4500 drives from Intel. And you wouldn't be wrong that the, you know, Solidime may have uh, come from the ashes of Intel shedding their storage. But this drive has had over five petabytes written to it. And it's as fast as the day it was new. Five petabytes on a drive that's brand new? This is an Optane competitor based on NAND flash. It's true. I didn't believe it. So I tried to break the drive and it would not break. It didn't even bend. Let's talk. All right, so the first thing to understand is that yes, this is an 800 gigabyte drive. This seems like this would be unremarkable. But the thing that's remarkable is that this is single level cell storage. Single level cells mean that there's only one bit stored in flash cells. Modern drives are four bits. There's four bits that are stored in an individual flash cell. So this would be the equivalent of a, about a four terabyte drive, but 800 gigabytes. This thing is designed to have its drive rewritten, to have its entire capacity rewritten. That's 50 drive writes per day. That is an unbelievable endurance. And it's literally unbelievable. You see, there's a, up till now, I didn't believe this was possible, but it was a dirty little secret. You see, as flash drives wear, their performance characteristic will change over time. They'll actually slow down over time as they get a certain percentage through their wear lifetime. And so it was necessary that I spend some time uh, accelerating the wear, as it were, on our Solidime drive in order to see if the performance characteristic would change over time, especially as we got a few petabytes written to it. And I'm happy to report that, no, that's not the case. This is a drive that, you know, on paper, it doesn't look particularly impressive. It's a Gen 4 drive, but its maximum read speed is only about 6.4 gigabytes per second. Its maximum write speed is about 4 gigabytes per second. But the access time, the latency, that is what is supremely impressive about this drive. And its consistency, even under load, even up to 800,000 IOPS per second. So this is a huge improvement for 144 layer NAND flash. And yes, this is the latest and greatest 144 layer NAND flash. So what this is, is a confluence of the greatest, the, the best of the best, the bend NAND media combined with the latest and greatest in the A to D converters to read the flash media. You see, most people don't understand flash media as a piece of silicon and the thing that reads and writes from the piece of silicon are two different things that are fused together. And so this is the latest and greatest NAND material with the latest and greatest fastest A to D converters, but it's going to use that flash media in single level cell mode. It's uh, not designed for density, it's designed for speed. And speedy is it. For our 4K random read Q depth one, we're talking about 53 microseconds. 53 microseconds is absolutely unheard of for NAND flash devices. The only thing faster is Intel Optane and Intel Optane for random 4K sector reads isn't a lot faster than 53 microseconds. It's usually on the order of about 35, 40 microseconds. Typical NAND flash is on the order of about 100 microseconds. Worst case scenario, some of the highest end NAND flash other than the Solidime is on the order of like mm, 70, 80 microseconds. 53 is an impressive accomplishment given the media. Now you might think this is an unimpressive capacity, but this is meant to be a write cache. This kind of a drive in a system is only ever written to. The time that it needs to be read is the time that something went sideways and it's got to double check its notes. So the endurance here makes perfect sense. This is the perfect NAND device to pair with a large ZFS array for your log, there are variants of this drive. There's a couple of different versions of this drive. I have the 50 drive write per day version of this that is 800 gigabytes. There is also the P5 5620, which is write centric and mixed workload. There's the D7, which is one drive write per day. That's the 5520. The 5430, which is about a half a drive write per day. And then you have the P5336, which is just generic content delivery. It's not designed for a lot of reading and writing. It's just a generic storage drive but it's still really high performance, don't get me wrong. This drive is designed for high frequency trading, high performance compute, 
online transaction processing, this is the drive you would want to store your database transaction logs on. This is it. If you're building a storage solution that mixes a uh, commodity, you know, low cost flash, and you also need some high endurance, uh, those solutions in software will typically put a bunch of these drives in front of a much larger storage pool for endurance reasons. So anything that is being rewritten constantly is going to be moved to one of these drives and then it'll use more economical QLC drives, quad level cells, four bits per cell uh, for any of the bulk storage needs that's needed on the array. But that's not managed on a single drive, that's managed across an array of drives with a software solution, be it proprietary or something special. I mean, people are cooking up scripts to do this kind of thing, even with Ceph and ZFS, but the special sauce are the scripts that are moving the hot and cold data around. But cold data, even from QLC flash for read, is still gonna be absurdly fast, but not sub 100 microseconds latency, and certainly not 53 microseconds uh, random latency. And 10 microseconds for sequential is amazing. So if you need to read in you know, a multi megabyte file, the average is going to trend much closer to that 10 microsecond sequential read, which is still in striking distance of what Optane is able to do. I'm, I, I didn't believe that it was possible to have a NAND device with latencies this good just because of the amount of time it takes to do the analog to digital conversion of a flash cell. There is something truly magical in this drive. So when we talk about media, cell wear, and flash lifetimes and th things like that, uh, sometimes you see drives that will um, perform optimally for time. And then as the media has some wear on it, they'll back off because the error rate goes up. This is just the nature of media wear. But again, Solidime hasn't done that here, or at least if they're doing that, it doesn't really perceptibly alter the performance of the drive over time, which is another critical key component when we're talking about enterprise storage applications. So I wish I had about 20 more of these. That, that would be really handy. But for the single one that I've, <laughs> I haven't ruined it. I mean, it's only got five petabytes on it. I mean, come on, what's a, what's a couple of petabytes between friends? The performance is still quite good, and the latency is still quite good. The performance is largely unchanged from the benchmarks that run today versus the past benchmarks. And so when we're talking about uh, 70, 30 mixed workloads or anything like that, uh, the drive still performs just the way that it did the day that it was new, and I, I, can't, I can't believe it. It is a solid piece of Solidime engineering. And also maybe a little bit more information for you about how SSD benchmarking should work in general. I'm actually working on building out my own proper SSD test suite, uh, both on the enterprise side and the consumer side, because you know this drive, if you look at it on paper, it's like 6.4 gigabytes per second read, four gigabytes per second write. In 2024, that is not an impressive specification, but it is an incredibly impressive specification when we're talking about this thing's use case, which is endurance from now until the end of time. That's basically what we're talking about in this drive and that it is able to keep up that level of performance without wearing out through five petabytes of write and it's still just as fast as it was. That's something very interesting. I'm Wildless Level 1, good job Solidime. If you have any questions or you want to see me try this in an application or do some further testing for your specific workload, I've got the drive. Let me know. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.